be with you. And also with you. It's the 17th Monday after Pentecost, and our lesson for today, we are going to be hearing the story of Jacob wrestling with God. It's part of our narrative lectionary, which is part of our tradition here at um, Forest English. Lately, we've been using the narrative lectionary, which goes through the Bible from Genesis through the end, sort of in a chronological way. So we're in Genesis, obviously. Um, I wanted to send out a special welcome to our friends from St. Mark's who are here, St. Mark's and Songs and Songs of Friends of God. Uh, or sorry, Dreams and Vision, so we want to welcome them. Um, coming up to the side is their brand new vicar. This is his first day. <laughs> vicar woke up. So this is for you people at St. Mark's. Ta-da! <laughs> So um, we're grateful that Pastor Emily Scott can be with us today too. And I already warned her for things that people tend to come in a little late and so that's fine. But they, they know about that. But for those who are still here, I wanted you to know that there are bathrooms available to you if you need anything during the service. You would just go out the aisle and turn left through a, a room we call the steep room. It has a sign actually that says steep room. Through that you'll see bathrooms in the corner and you can just go right through that door and then find your way there. Um, also, we are recognizing Social Media Sunday, so we are encouraging people to, at some point today, or even during the service, maybe you want to send a post on social media saying, what did you learn today? What, what hit you today about worship? And we, <laughs> I was trying this out with Laurel, so hopefully this works out. We have been working on our Wi-Fi to make it easier. You should be able to access F-E-E-L-C, First English Evangelical Church Guest. And that should get you onto the, our Wi-Fi with no password whatsoever. Um, it's a little quirky, so we're still working out some of the kinks. But if you would like to use that, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, I invite you now to please rise as you are able. Vicar Mo is going to help us begin with the confession. Gathering now. May our table be open like yours, welcoming like yours, inviting like yours, generous like yours. May we always make the time for each other's stories, each other's needs, each other's dreams, each other's journeys. Generous God, may this place be an invitation to gather and travel together to see the fields of stars and numerous grains of sand together.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
down. They would be happy to read our blessing of devices. As Social Media Sunday, I invite you now that if you have a social device with you, if you have a cell phone or something, you might want to hold it up. We're going to bless these devices. And we're doing that because this is how we communicate in today's world. And we need God's blessing as we try to reach out. So, yeah, thank you. Each time and place has given us new ways to share good news and ask for prayers and action. One of the ways we live and work as the people of God right now is through our phones, tablets, and computers. If you have a device with you this morning, please hold it in your hands as we offer this prayer. Hold in our hands these tools of connection. They bring the answer. They love us and we respond. For some of us, this is our calendar, our means of expressing ourselves, our way of reaching out and exploring our world. We have more information at our fingertips than any generation in the history of the world. That is a weighty thing. We sometimes feel so small compared to so many online. Some use their phones to encourage others, but others use them to diminish and persecute. Keep us aware of the power of our words to bless or curse. Make our shared worlds thoughtful, our tweets respectful, our photos uplifting, and our posts challenging to those who receive them. Amen. Amen. Today's lesson is Genesis chapter 32, verses 9 through 13, 22 through 30. 
Jacob worried about encountering his brother Esau again after year, years after swindling Esau's birthright from him. Before the brothers would be reunited, Jacob wrestled all night with God, and Jacob would not let God go until God had blessed him. Jacob's name was changed to Israel to mark his new relationship with God as he entered the land. Jacob was astonished that he remained alive after seeing God face to face. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred, and I will do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the steadfast love and all of the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with my, only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I am afraid of him. He may come and kill us all, the mothers with the children. Yet you have said, I will surely do your good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted because of their number. So he spent that night there, and from what he had with him, he took a present for his brother Esau. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. The man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. And our young friends are welcome to come forward. Hi. So, what happens in today's story is at the end, Jacob gets this blessing. And Jacob gets this blessing, and so a blessing is sort of like wishing something for somebody, or maybe wishing that God would be with somebody, um, or maybe even a mission. It could be a mission, like you might say, go in peace, serve the Lord. You could say that's sort of like a blessing you're telling people to do. So I looked up some of the blessings that we use sometimes in church. This is the Aaronic blessings, like Aaron in the Bible, in the Hebrew Scripture says this in Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look on you with favor and give you peace. Does that sound familiar? You ever hear that? Yeah, okay. Um, here's one. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Does that sound good? We just said that. Yeah. Okay. What about this? May the force be with you. That's not really a blessing. But it is sort of because you're wishing something for somebody. It's maybe a, a, a literary lesson. Um, there's, I, I found an Irish blessing too. May the roads rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rains fall soft upon fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Which is kind of pretty too. So what I thought is, I wondered if you have a blessing. So I thought we, with paper and pen, we can write our own blessing, and we're going to start with this, May. And so what would you wish for somebody? Like, you, if you're, it might be a, if it's a friend, you might say, May you ace the test today. Like, so, like, what would be something you'd say, May what? What's a good thing <coughs> to wish for somebody? <coughs> like, 
Make your day be easy and light? Nice. You mean like no rain? <laughs> Make your day be easy and light. That would be a nice thing to do, right? Okay, anybody else? Brian, I know you're going to have a good one. May your heart be filled with strength and courage. With strength and courage, you're adding a joy. Any other blessing you think you might want to wish people? So like, what I thought we could do is let's stand up and give your blessing to everybody. So, and when we when we get, do a blessing, a lot of times we put our hands up and sort of like, I want to cover all of you. Like, I'm not doing just you. I'm not just me. I want to do everybody. So we're gonna put our hands up a little bit so we're gonna cover everybody. And then, um, yeah, I'll 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 be holder. I'll be that left turn. <laughs> Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. May your day be easy and light. May your heart be filled with strength, courage, and joy. All right. Amen. Okay, there you go. And amen is something we sometimes say that means so be it. So you just give a blessing to people. And you can do that without writing it down. You just, if, somebody, if you know somebody's going on a trip, you might say, may your joy be uh, filled as, may you be filled with joy as you're back. Or like, I always say, make nothing, um, that you have an uneventful trip. That's what I usually say, meaning I don't want delays and things. So, you can just think of opportunities to wish people blessings. So, now, now we're going to say a prayer, whatever I say, we say the whole congregation will repeat. So let's pray. Dear God, give us words to share your blessing. Dear God, help us to encourage each other in peace. Amen. You don't have to be one of these three. All of us can find chances to wish blessings on people. So thank you so much for coming forward. And now I invite everybody to rise as you are able. Our gathering, our song of the day is Blessed Be the God of Israel. It's on page 10 in your bulletin.
You may be seated. In today's lesson, we heard the words, Deliver me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I am afraid of him, Jacob prays. The day of reckoning was near. It was time to face the music. Back when Jacob and Esau were young, Jacob tripped his twin brother Esau out of his birthright and his blessing. That is no way to foster brotherly affection. Esau was understandably angry, so Jacob left town, and he went to stay with his uncle Laban in Haran. This time, Jacob was the tripped one, and it turns out his uncle Laban was the one who was doing the tricking. Uncle Laban switched brides so that Jacob married Leah instead of his intended Rachel. So fast forwarding uh, a second wedding, two handmaidens, 11 kids later. Okay, here we are. Jacob is just about to meet up with his long lost brother whom he had terribly wronged. And we pick up the story the night before the encounter. Deliver me please from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. And no wonder Jacob was scared at asking God to deliver him. You know why? Because he deserved to be afraid. He had actually just sent messengers with a peace offering to his brother, and they came back with word that, and think of what it sounds like, your brother is coming with 400 men. Gulp, right? Naturally, Jacob feared the worst, and he prayed, deliver me, please, from the hand of my brother. But the night just before this painful reunion, Jacob had a little bit of wrestling to do. He sent his family across the river so that he was alone, but he wasn't really alone, we find out. He spent the entire night wrestling with this mysterious God, God-like figure, wrestling with God. I have so many questions about this wrestling with God part. I mean, honestly, if a human being is going to wrestle with God, wouldn't God win in like seconds? Why did it take so long? And why couldn't God prevail? Why did God have to ask Jacob to let him go? He's God. Surely God could have overpowered Jacob and gotten away. And when Jacob asked for a blessing, why was the blessing really more of a name change? Is that a blessing? At the end of the wrestling match, God asked, What is your name? And Jacob stated his name. The name Jacob means supplanter or usurper. Just think about what he had done in his childhood. His very name that he was taking another's place, taking the position of another person, which is exactly what he did to his brother Esau. And that name was no longer who he was. He was a new person. He had grown up. He had been burned a few times himself. He had matured. He no longer wanted to usurp his brother, rather he sought at this point peace with him. So God blessed Jacob with a new name, with a new identity. He could now be called Israel. Yisra in Hebrew means struggle and El means God. So the name Israel is believed to be one who has struggled with God. And Jacob politely asks the name of this nocturnal wrestling partner and God said, why is it you ask my name? It really is pretty obvious. After all, Jacob's new name says who he was struggling with. He was struggling with God. So I wanted to ask you about this. Do you think of it as a blessing to get to struggle with God? I'm sure we've all struggled at times in our lives when you don't get the job that you really had your heart set on, when your relative got terribly sick or injured, when death came to a loved one, when you let down a good friend or partner, uh, maybe you didn't mean to, but you hurt them. When COVID disrupted or continues disrupt, to disrupt our lives, who here has not had a struggle with what happens in their lives? Who has not had a struggle with God? Just think of those difficult times when you're wrestling with tough issues. Does it feel like a blessing to you? Yeah, not really. <laughs> I don't think of struggle and blessing as the same kind of thing. We think of blessings as a lack of struggle. I think it's kind of interesting that when we're talking about a blessing, it may like be easy. You know what hard things? 
We want things to be very simple and that we really do. We don't want people to suffer or to have to struggle. But wrestling is sometimes what we have in our lives. We usually feel blessed when things are going great, when there's no problems, but that is just not life. Our lives are filled with twists and turns, with conflicts and struggles. Things happen to us, and sometimes, as in the story of Jacob, we sometimes bring on the conflict ourselves. Those bumpy times can feel lonely. But God never leaves us alone. Just like the way God mysteriously appears to Jacob at night, God shows up when we are feeling burdened and conflicted. And a really good point was made to me when we were looking at this text with some of my colleagues. Wrestling is something you can't do by yourself. You have to have someone or something you're wrestling with. So God chooses to be engaged in human struggle. God doesn't have to, but God chooses to be part of that. God chooses to let us wrestle with who we are, with who God is, with what we should do. And what I really like about this is notice that God doesn't just dictate solutions. God accompanies us human beings as we come to new insights and new epiphanies about our difficult lives. I think God is like this really good parent who's there but steps back to let their child sometimes deal with the mistake because they need to in order to grow up. And just as Jacob's name is changed through the struggle, Jacob himself is changed. He walks away with a limp because of it. He got through a night of wrestling with God, and that could not be a trivial thing. It's like, okay, life, bring it on. I, I, I've been in a wrestling match with God. I can do anything, right? Confrontation with an estranged brother, yeah, okay, bring it on. Going out to get a job or going back into the dating pool again, all right, bring it on. I can do it. I can handle it. Deal with another COVID variant. Not thrilled about it, but yeah, bring it on. I can deal with it. Because I have God with me, because I have grown, because I have changed. And God lets us, even encourages us to wrestle with God and with our issues. And that makes us stronger people of God. About two months ago, I chatted with a newly ordained pastor who spent her nearly her entire seminary career learning and growing and being challenged in the time of COVID. She dealt with lockdowns, with classes online, without the benefit of those really important side conversations with a fellow student. She, what really got me, she did her required clinical pastoral work. We are required to go into a hospital and work for just a little while to get to know how to deal with patients and how to bring God's good news to them. She did that during COVID, during a time when parents and families were not allowed to come and hold the hand of someone who was, um, who was dying from COVID, who was on a ventilator, she was there holding their hand. That was her CPE, clinical pastoral education experience. She had her measure of struggling with God. And so she told me words that I just thought were so powerful. Hey, I got through seminary in the pandemic. I can handle anything. And I've heard people say this about other kinds of things. My grandmother lived through the depression. I lived through the depression. I can handle anything. Maybe we've said that been through World War II, been through 9-11, been through a divorce, been through a struggle. But since they got through that, they had the confidence that they could handle whatever the future brings. And what I really liked about this, and I think that the young folks helped us see that, is when we struggle, a lot of times there's a blessing there that maybe we couldn't see at the very beginning. Um, I gave as an example in my um, little announcement to everybody that sort of a negative struggle is, oh no, the roads are closed. St. Mark's won't be able to worship. That's the struggle. The blessing is, you're here. So for seven, seven, sometimes there's a blessing that comes from a struggle. And we have to be open and ready to see where that is. And whatever you are wrestling with right now, just know that you're not alone. When God told Jacob to return to his homeland, God assured him, and these are God's words, and I will be with you. God is also with you as you struggle and wrestle with faith issues. God is with you as you face the slings and arrows of life. God is with you as you acknowledge your mistakes and support your loved ones who walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You have been changed 
through your struggles. And you have a new name in the eyes of God. And that name for each and every one of us is the name of the Lord. God loves us. God is with us. That makes all the difference. Amen. And since we have the blessing of some guests, some friends, what we sometimes do is we invite people to go and find somebody to chat about one of the questions in the Bible with. So I'm going to ask you to do that. And if, you, if you're sitting next to somebody that's fine, you can stay there. If you feel really bold, you can go to somebody who you don't know and just do with them. These are the questions that are in the bulletin on page 11. Number one, when Jacob slash Israel asked the name of his wrestling partner, he did not get an answer, but he knew he had seen God. Have you wrestled with God when you faced a difficult issue? And number two, is there any past experience you've had that emboldens you to face difficult times in the future? So those are two possible things to talk about. I am literally giving you two minutes. You don't get any more than two minutes. So I would like you to find somebody, it could be somebody sitting next to you. Again, you might say, oh, I'm gonna go up to that person, I don't know. That's awesome, that's a blessing right there. So I'll give you two minutes to find somebody and have just a short conversation to reflect on this scripture.
maybe the, maybe when we appoint the next <laughs> you learn from your mistakes. <laughs> and merciful. Teach your church to restore relationships and be open to faith struggles we can learn from. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who sends the wind and the sun, help us remember that even the humblest parts of creation are precious to you. Show us how best to care for the earth and its creatures. God, in your mercy, God, who is ready to relent from punishing, impart your compassionate wisdom to legislators, judges, members of the military, and law enforcement. Give them courage to serve their communities in times of uncertainty, stress, or exhaustion. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God who saves, direct your people who are tempted by evil ways. Protect your children from calamity and disaster. Strengthen all who are incarcerated. Encourage all who are in despair or pain of any kind. Especially among our members, Andrew, Carol, Helen, Glenn, Frankie, Matthew, Barbara, David and Margo, and among our friends, Mary, Susan, Frank, Elijah, Jay and family, Albert, Rachel, Ashley, Roger, Julie, Bo, Scott, Barbara, Carolyn and Richard, Eric, Bob, Norma, Marsha, Ray, Ron, William, Walter, Michelle, 
Florence, Hi, Jennifer, Jake, Gary, Nancy, Marianne, Charlotte, Beth, Mary, Bill, Bianco, Sue, Eric, Whitey, Jessica, Julia, Barbara, Miki, Rachel, Rick and Denise, Samuel, Christy, Christine, Anne, the family and friends of Margaret Kreider, who died recently, the union of Tori Chopin and John Wilkins, and for those of our friends from St. Mark's, we pray for Carl and Meryl, Robert, Linda and John, Jamie, Gil, Philip, Austin, Sue and Jim, Denise, David, Deb, Sean, and Anthony, as well as those we remember not silently or out loud. God, in your mercy. God of all nations, may your peace overcome evil among people and places mired in conflict like Myanmar, Belarus, Ethiopia, Israel, Palestine, the Church in the Holy Land, Afghanistan, Haiti, Iran, and Ukraine. God, in your mercy. God who leads, bless Baltimore and our online mission field. Be with our leaders Joe, Wes, and Brandon, and our bishops Elizabeth and Bill and their staff. For those who seek healing through the 12-step programs offered in our coffee house. For our sister congregation St. Mark's, and our prayer partner First Lutheran Church and you in Michigan. God in your mercy, God, who abound in steadfast love, we give thanks for the saints' call to the kingdom of heaven. United with them in spirit, hold us firm as we labor in this life and look to the life to come. God, in your mercy, remember us according to your steadfast love, as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion, made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You may return to your seats and be seated. Another one of our changes due to COVID is we don't really have to pay. So there is a box in the back if you'd like to make a donation if you brought something with you. We also have a QR code if you want to go straight to our um, website, make a donation there, or you can text an offering. Um, I'm just going to ask Pastor Emily. If somebody brought an offering from St. Mark's, what should they do? Um, they could give it online at stmarks.org. Right. We want to make sure we also continue to support our own congregation. Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please rise and pray.
merciful, O God, our rock and our salvation. Hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the earth was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. You connected people with you and with each other to build a people of God. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them into freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmists cried out for healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the sea. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. 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 Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. 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 Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O oh God, you are bread, send your spirit on this meal. O oh God, you are bread, feed us with yourself. O oh God, you are wine, warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire, transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic, O oh God, most motherly, O oh God, our strength and our song. You show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the light of the Spirit of our risen Savior, like in you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites us to this holy feast. All are welcome. You don't have to be a member of this congregation. You don't have to be Lutheran. The gifts of God are free. Jesus invites you to the table. Come, eat, and live. You may be seated, and our ushers, ushers would like you forward to receive communion. If you come up, you can take an empty cup if you prefer wine. If you prefer grape juice, those are the ones that are pre-filled. If you prefer a gluten-free wafer, just let your server know. <laughs>
Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word. Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food, send us to gather the word to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for everybody who, who came today to the rain certainly didn't help for anything, artscape or worship. So thank you for those who were able to make it. Again, welcome to our St. Mark's friends. And also, we want to thank um, Vicar Rogoff was sort of told, hey, do this. So that was a cool reading for some of him. So thank you for being uh, probably with it. Also, Pastor Emily and Scott, thank you for your flexibility in worship. If we have uh, some announcements printed in your bulletin, I just want to remind you, we have the adult forum going on. We're going to be reading the book Property by America. We're currently re uh, watching the Al Gore sequel to the documentary, The Feed Truth. There will be a pet blessing next Sunday, so we're not going to be in the carpentry area. We're going to be in the fellowship hall downstairs. Um, Leah is here tonight, right? Yes. Oh, yay! Okay. <laughs> we have a new soprano, so we just wanted to make sure folks who weren't here uh, two weeks ago her first Sunday with us. We want to make sure they have a chance to say hi to her. Also, um, the Marley Ridge Walk the Pond is today, but yeah, maybe not if the rain is not short. We do have a tent revival coming up. Claim Churches and just North Delaware, Maryland Synod is doing a sort of a revival kind of thing. It doesn't sound Lutheran, but we're going to make it Lutheran. It's going to be Saturday, October 28th from 11 to 5, and everybody is welcome to come. There's lots of fun events happening, so we're hoping that people do that. Also, we have an Oktoberfest Fall Festival that's in the works. We're trying to get the official date and time schedule. And then I invited Pastor Emily to share whatever's going on for her congregation announcements. Go ahead. Well, first of all, thank you so much for your warm welcome, Pastor Sandy and um, the congregation of First English. It's really lovely to be here and to be reunited. I know that we've celebrated it um, in different ways through the years, and in fact, we were once one congregation before St. Mark's split off to go and um, do their own thing, so it's nice to be together, and um, it's just been lovely to be welcomed so warmly. Um, again, we're very excited that Mo is here for his first Sunday, a little bit unconventional, but he'll be settling in um, next Sunday into our moments of worship. And a few quick announcements for St. Mark's folks. We also have a pet blessing coming up this Saturday, actually, at 11 a.m. We'll have a short little service on the portico outside, but the beginning, and then have a blessing of the animals. So if your dog or cat needs a double blessing, um, you're welcome to come also on Saturday. Those <laughs> um, dogs do in fact need a blessing. Yes, and there will be pump cups afterwards as a special treat and some cider for people. Um, so please come take part in that. And then just a reminder that we have a special congregational meeting coming up on October 22nd after worship to vote on recommendations from our vitality teams. So that's coming up. And then lots of events around Halloween and both trunk or treat, which we always have around Halloween, which will be on Sunday after worship this year, as well as um, a silent movie at the end of the opera um, with Mr. Hart playing. Uh, the organ and accompanying the sound of the So everyone is welcome to all of these wonderful events. And um, thank you so much. Just one more quick thing. Uh, we do have a fellowship time. There's little things to notch on. We call it coffee hour. Way more than coffee. But please don't take more than an hour. But anyway, it's over here too. You can go out to the left and there's little snacks and you can sit back. Um, so that, please know that you're all welcome for that. And uh, Mo is going to, or Vicar Mo is going to give us our spend table. God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Please rise if you are able for ascending song of Holy Spirit, Root of Life. <laughs>